but I'm not just going to start it and watch it run. That's boring. After I rip it all apart, we're going to put it all back together. At that point, uh, I'm going to give this engine away to one of you. Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. A company sent me this engine and I agreed to include it in a video because I was curious. I thought it would be pretty cool. I think you will too. So let's check this thing out. <laughs> This manual is quite lacking. I've already looked through it. There's some useful stuff in here, but there's a lot of things that you really kind of need to know that just aren't included in here. And I will leave a link to this in the description if anybody wants to get one. Here is the engine. This is a scaled down version of an engine that's commonly used on a Harley. So this is actually a four stroke engine complete with valves and timing and push rods and the whole, the whole thing. Uh, it's really amazing being this small see the size of my hand relative to this thing. This thing's pretty tiny, uh, but it actually runs. This is the carburetor. There's the throttle. These are the valve covers, spark plugs. Uh, what a cool little engine. You can feel the compression in it when you turn it over right there. Uh, my first impression is, wow, uh, you know, really good build quality, nice and heavy, very cool. You put this rod in a drill, you put it in here, and this is one of those one-way bearings. So it will spin freely if you turn clockwise, but if you want to start it, it will catch on the rod going counterclockwise. I'm excited to see the tiny little valves and the mechanisms, the push rods and everything that are actuating those. So the instructions are horrible. I actually had to Google around figuring out like how to hook this thing up. I have to supply power to this. Yeah, this hooks to this. This, I guess, is, is an electronic coil. This goes to ground on the engine block right there. And then I need to hook power to this, which I think is 12 volts, but I'm not sure. I think this must be a distributor, but I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on there. What is controlling the timing of the spark? We're gonna look at that. This little barb fitting right there is where you hook the fuel. Uh, basically, I just need to put a hose on that and run it over to some fuel and it calls for a 25 to 1 mix. So I will mix a little bit of that up. Uh, I don't know what this is. I'm assuming that is just a vent to atmosphere for this crankcase down here. But first, I want to start it. And in order to start it, I need somewhere to put the thing. They didn't send a mount or any mounting bolts. Now we have a solid base that we can uh, work with to try to get this thing started. So the electrical system needs to be grounded to the block and they give you this little connector here and a ground screw, but the screw's too long. It's like they just uh, overlook some little details. So I am going to cut this screw off so that it will actually tighten on the eye there. Be right back. So in the process of shortening that bolt, I sent it flying across the shop, never to be seen again. I think they fall into a black hole when you do that because, you know, I looked. <laughs> it's not there. But thankfully, I tend to scavenge old bolts and in my organizer I found one that's the right size. For the electrical, they gave you uh, this little connector. These just ended in bare wires. I clipped on a couple spades so that I can plug it into the 12 volt battery that runs my little Bosch drills. So there's my 12 volt power supply. Let me get the spark plug wires. It doesn't seem like it makes a good connection on the spark plug, but I guess there's enough voltage to, to jump. There's no indication as to which plug goes where. So it's possible that I have these backwards. If it doesn't run, I'll just change those wires and see if that makes a difference. Here's my fuel, that's 25 to one. I'm just going to put the hose in it. There should be enough suction. Let me put the exhaust 
I think we are ready for a start attempt. All right, here we go. Betting you I have no fuel. Neat little engine. I need to clamp it down so that it's not trying to jump all over the place. I am really impressed. It, it runs well and such a small engine. It's going to be cool to dig into this thing and see the machining of all the valves and, and the timing and everything. So let's rip this thing apart. Surprising how much oil goes right through there. See all this? That's oil coming out of the exhaust. It's certainly well lubricated at 25 to 1. So what are the chances that I'll get this apart without losing anything and then put it back together? What are the chances that it's going to run after I put it back together? Little gasket. All right, so for a little reference, this is the, the valve. So the valve reaches down into the cylinder and it's got a, a plate on the end of it. And this spring pulls it into a default closed position so that it seals around the edge. And any pressure in the cylinder will also cause it to seal. So it has to be held down physically uh, in order for it to be open. And what holds it down is this rocker arm here and a push rod here so the timing mechanism usually the camshaft pushes up on the push rod which then pushes up on the valve like that you can actually see the push rod right here this is our push rod Let's make sure they're the same. And one thing I can see is that they're at the same level when installed. So if I put them in backwards, they are obviously not at the same level. So yeah, shouldn't be too hard to get those right. Now on a big engine, these valve springs are very strong and you need like a spring compressor in order to take the tension off of the valve. But these are just little things, cute little things. My valves just fell down in there so the engine will not turn over. I've got to get that head off of there, which is these bolts here. That's going to be tricky because there's not a lot of room. I may have to take this guy off of there just to even get to that bolt. Well, that's not what I was expecting. What's going on there? Nothing. That's just a... Uh, Basically a cap to guide that wire. Oh. <laughs> I 
Here's your carburetor. This head does not want to come off. Now what is preventing this from coming off? <laughs> it might be the bolt I left in there. I don't know. Let me think. All right, there's your head and your valves. Let me make sure they're the same. Yeah, those look identical. Intake's nice and clean. Exhaust is all dirty and sooty. And then that's where the spark plug comes in. And here you can see how the valves, being a cone shape like that, will drop in and seal against this surface here. And there you can see the piston doing its thing, well lubricated. My pinky just fits in there. That's quite a cylinder. You know, before I take that off, because at that point it's going to be harder to spin the engine over, let's pull this cover off and take a look at our timing and what's generating the spark. I've used a red sharpie to make some marks so I know how the gears mesh. So behind here I have a little, can't really see it yet, it looks like a circuit board of some kind. It's probably operating off of this spinning to determine when to spark. I assume there's a magnet in there. Uh, unfortunately I was fiddling with it and I'm not positive that this one is correct. This one could be off a tooth. So if I have a problem I should come in here and go one way or the other with this gear like that. But now that I know how it goes back in, I can take this out. Can you see the cams right there? As those spin around, they are gonna push these up and down. Like this lobe right here, when it gets around, is going to push on this push rod like that. Yeah, I'm gonna take the head off of this side and just leave the whole upper assembly intact but that will get that out of the way and get these push rods out of here. So yeah, just magnets in there going by some pickups. Beyond that, I'm not really able to uh, tell you how exactly that is generating our spark. This is a coil. This might be working like the electronic version of a point system where the coil builds up energy and then this sends a signal to have the, the electricity flow stop as if the points opened and suddenly in a secondary coil send a uh, spark down the uh, plug wire. That would be my guess, but I don't know. I'm going to keep this together, these gears meshed correctly so that I don't uh, lose that timing. If we take one of these off, we're going to end up with a piston hanging out in space and I'm gonna to need to be able to separate the crankcase down here which means taking it off of our mount. So let me get this flywheel off of here first. Good little key. Let's not lose that. All right, I am gonna drill out my welds so that I can uh, get it off of this mounting plate. <laughs> so we've got one metal ring and then it looks like an O-ring. Those O-rings must be pretty tough because they're, uh, they do get hot. I mean, this is an engine. Let me get this other side off. I don't know if you can see, but there is a nice crosshatch pattern in the cylinder. Looks really good. Hmm. You can really see how the up and down motion of the pistons translates into rotational. All right, let's open up this crankcase.
There it goes. Ooh. You are into it now. That is uh, somehow gratifying. All right, well, I must say I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality all throughout this thing. You know, these push rods look good. They have a little bit of play on them, but not much. The only thing I'm confused about is, is lubrication. I mean, everything's nicely oiled, but is it gonna stay that way? Is there enough oil getting by the pistons to get down into the crankcase and keep it oiled? There is an access port. Yeah, this guy right there. You could put a little oil in that hole. In the manual, it also shows modification options for an oil pump. Yeah, so in order to take this apart further, this pin that is, it looks like it's pressed fit in, would have to come out. I'd end up damaging it, I think, trying to do that. I don't see the point either. You can see what it is. That pin is the offset journal of the crankshaft, and then it spins like that. And it's very well machined. I'm impressed. This engine costs just under $600. You know, for me to try to make this, it's not unreasonable. Making all these little parts and all the troubleshooting that I'm sure they had to go through to get this thing working correctly. So now, can we get it back together? This is the calf from the previous video that had the umbilical cord still attached. It's around three months old. What do you want? What do you want? A little scratch on your nose? <laughs> you want a lick? Yep. It's like a giant cat tongue. I really think the guy or, you know, whoever's the mind behind all this loves engines and really tried to do a good job and did do a good job, but got to the end and didn't feel like fooling with the manual and instructions and uh, some of the final details. You know, typical man, get it running and then you're done. <laughs> Just a little bit of extra work and a, a better manual, which I would even help them write if they contact me and they want to, they want some help getting it right. Um, uh, I think this thing, uh, this thing's pretty cool. <laughs> Don't need a ring compressor for that. Torque to spec. Every last one of them. I redid my base. I drilled and tapped the bottom of the studs and made a new heavier base so it won't uh, jump around quite so much. These little bolts are in set. It will still lay flat, uh, but it will also be something that can be taken apart. Much better. I needed to put those valves in.
All right, so I changed my mind. I want to keep it. I'm not giving it away. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't just edit that part of the video out, could I? No, of course I'm giving it away. Um, so what what needs to happen for you to win this engine? Well, a couple things. Uh, first of all, this video needs to get 10,000 likes. I think that should be easy enough. Slam that like button. We'll get there. And then uh, I decided I'm just going to give it to the person who has the best comment. I don't even know what that's going to be. It can be funny. It can be educational. It's a comment that, you know, is going to just strike a chord with me, fit the channel, fit the video that I'm working on a model engine, whatever. So good luck, everybody. Leave a comment. And uh, after we get to 10,000 likes, I'll pick my favorite one and I will reply to your comment. We'll set up a way for me to send you this cool engine here. So I was just about to try starting and I decided to give it a spin just to make sure nothing was hitting and I am not getting the compression a little bit. So I'm pretty sure I am off a tooth on my uh, timing gear. Right, so that is one tooth different. Let's see if we get better compression now. Negative. So let's go the other direction. Kicking myself. I really thought there would have been timing marks, but I've looked at these and I can't see anything that, that tells you that you're lined up. I'm just not getting the compression that I was getting before. So this is kind of annoying. I haven't used it that much, but the one-way bearing here failed. So this now just spins freely in both directions when you're trying to start it. Because it's left-handed, it unscrews the, the nut, so you can't use that. So what I'm going to do, maybe I'll weld a nut on the end. It's nice to have something you can uh, hook to with a socket and quickly get your drill off. So I've got this nut. It doesn't quite fit in there. So I'm going to put the nut in the lathe and turn it down until I can press it in, you know, maybe three-eighths of an inch or so. I just took that down. That's about one thousandths bigger than the dimension in there. And I'm just going to try to press it in with my arbor press here. Nice. Now I'm just going to do a few little welds around the edge just to keep that locked in position. So it should run, assuming I have the timing right. So you really learn an engine when you have to do the timing, especially when you're doing it without any instructions. I wasn't confident that I got these gears back in the right position. So I thought through how to do this. It's all mechanical, it's not that hard to do. This gear controls the camshaft, which is behind it, um, or that is the camshaft right there, the cams are behind it. And these are the push rods inside these tubes here. 
and this is the crankshaft. This determines the position of the pistons. They're just going up and down. This determines when the valves open and close. So the position of this gear relative to this gear is crucial. It has to be right. And the way to tell, it's actually pretty easy. I need to be able to follow the piston and watch the valves. Now this is the intake valve because it's over here by the carburetor. This is the exhaust valve because it's over here by the exhaust pipe. So what I'm going to do, I've got a little piece of plastic, won't damage anything. I'm going to push it down against the top of the piston. And then I'm going to rotate the engine in the proper direction and we're going to watch the valves. So nothing happening. So that must be my compression stroke because nothing's happening there as the piston is coming up. So there it's at the top. Now we're heading back down. So that would be the end of the power stroke. That means the next thing that should happen is right at the bottom, which is about where I am, the intake valve, no, the exhaust valve should open. There, do you see it actuate? So it just exhausted, now it's at the top, and the intake valve should open. There, the intake valve opens. Okay, so now I'm at the bottom, we're ready for compression, so both valves should be closed, and they are. Now the spark plug should fire. Now we're back at the bottom and the exhaust valve is opening. So if the valves were opening either early or late, I would just rotate the gear to make them open at the proper time. And intake. Compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. There. Valve timing is correct. Now let's look at the spark timing. First I confirm that both spark wires fire at the same time. This means it doesn't matter how the plug wires are connected, they will work on either cylinder. Now this is what controls the timing of the spark. And it's done electronically, but there's two magnets on this gear here. Behind it there is a Halifax sensor. It's basically a little circuit board, we looked at that. Um, and when the magnet goes by it, it produces a spark. But is there a delay? It, it, exactly what time does the spark get produced? Because the spark needs to occur right now, right when this thing is at top dead center. And I don't have any way of knowing that it's occurring at the right time, except it occurred to me I can use a camera to do that. If I put a camera on this and have the spark wire over here sparking to the block, I'm going to be able to see when it sparks. So I'm going to get a camera and we are going to look so that we can see our gear timing and we can also see our spark timing in the same frame and slow it down and I'm going to be able to see is my spark occurring when the gears are in this position? Am I early? Am I late? And if I'm early or late, well I can just rotate this gear by the number of teeth I need to to get it to spark at the right time. Well, this is even a little easier than I thought. I didn't think it would spark spinning so slowly, but I can spin this thing by hand at any speed. And I guess because it's electronic, watch this. There, one cylinder just sparked. But that, that would be this, the, the one that I don't have the timing marked for. So let's get around and see how close we are. Right there. So it's firing early. I need it to fire one, like two, at least two teeth later. So let me change those gears. Still a little too early. Okay, let's check it again. Looks right to me. 
That is perfect. All right, let's put it back together and see if it runs. Ooh, almost had it. Yes. Oh yeah. Runs good. I think I'm gonna put the valve covers and everything back on and then let's the only thing left to do is fiddle with the carburetor and see how good I can get it running. And this is the air intake. I'm just using my finger as the choke. The carb isn't real responsive. It's kind of hard to tune it to exactly where it needs to be, but I think it's it's running well. Yeah, I like it. Just like that. That's good. So some of the things I wish they had included in the manual. This, they should have said, you need to hook this uh, from 6 to 12 volts. I was having a problem at one point because the battery on this drill, even though it says it's 12 volts, it actually says 10.8. Uh, but if you actually measure it, it's more like 14. So I think I was over-voltaging this, and I was not getting a spark with that. What I found works best is 6 volts. So I've got this uh, battery charger set to 6 volts, and I'm just using that as a power supply. You could also use, you know, AA batteries or, or any batteries. Uh, it, this needs very little power. How to check for spark? Well, as we've seen, this thing sparks no matter how slow it's spinning, which is really useful. And you can actually see through these boots here. So if you just take this wire and pull it away from that plug a little bit, and then very slowly turn the engine. There, did you see that spark? I'm hoping that showed up. I saw it. So you can confirm that they're sparking just by doing that. The other thing is, this right here is your carburetor adjustment screw. You may need to adjust that once you get it running um, to idle the best and to have the most... Uh, throttle response. It is adjusted from the factory, so you probably don't want to mess with it right off. You want to get it started first, but if you're not sure, you can't get it started. Uh, they told me that a turn and a half out. So you gently screw it all the way in, and then come out one half, one, one and a half, and that would be a good starting point. Why isn't that in the manual? Yeah, my overall assessment is this is a, this is a cool model engine. If you're interested in something like this, uh, I would recommend this. And if you really want to learn how engines work, there's nothing better than tinkering and taking it apart and, you know, fiddling with the carburetor and fiddling with the timing and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I would recommend sterlingkit.com. Um, thank you guys for sending this to me. And I, I would definitely recommend to someone if they're interested to buy something from them. Uh, they have a bunch of different engines over there. So I'll leave a link in the description. You guys go check it out.
I would call that a successful video. What do you guys think? I hope you learned something. I think this thing's pretty cool. My uh, advice to the company would be to do some work on that manual. It really needs some help. And uh, you can make this um, a highly desirable engine. Uh, you know, you're, you're most of the way there. You've done 95% of what you need. Uh, you just got to do a little bit extra. And I would give this two thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.